Hi there. I'm going to show you a little bit about the virtual EDS TCM module that's used in the Energetics Core System 6. I wanted to point out a few things about how to use this and what kind of data you're actually getting and what it means. So to begin with, I'm just going to go in here and we're going to use the example patient that comes with the system. And when we look at this example patient, we can see here that there are several graphs and so on. I'm just going to pick a basic graph so that we can get an idea what this looks like. Now the measurements you're seeing right now and this graph are really based on what happens when you perform an actual EDS examination uh, and, and look at the, the skin resistance at the acupuncture points. EDS stands for electrodermal screening, by the way. When you do that, then you end up with results that look like this. For example, this red a uh, pair of uh, channels right here. This is the lung channel, left and right. And red means that it's excessive. The blue on the liver means that it's deficient. And then this purple color on the heart means that it's split. Split is when there's a left-right imbalance in the same channel. Then the other channels here that are all green, those are considered normal. They don't need anything. But the ones that are not green are the ones that need some treatment. Then over here on the left side, you'll see treatment point recommendations. And when you click on them, it will show you the actual points to be treated, where they're located. It's the yellow one in the picture. And then you can go through and treat those points. And you can treat them with, with needling, if you're an acupuncturist, with a laser, with electric stim, with a magnet, with pressure, you name it. But there's uh, any way that you want to treat them, as long as you treat those, those appropriate points. And that brings about balance in the system. Now. Here's what's different when you look at a virtual examination. We'll just grab this patient here called Fred, and we'll look at this. You'll see that things are quite a bit different because the virtual examination tends to only highlight the, the real issues, the real imbalances, rather than highlighting all the normal stuff. And so you'll see, for example, over here on stomach, stomach is split. It's got a 200 measurement for the left side and a 3 virtual measurement for the right. That's about as split as you can get. That's a huge left-right difference. And that's just magnifying for us or pointing out the fact that there's a split in the stomach channel for this particular person. Pericardium showing a small split, large intestine showing a small split, and the rest of these basically green or showing zero, which uh, in my opinion just means there's nothing really there to worry about. Something that's important you need to know on this screen, there's a button here called, called Normalize. This Normalize button helps redo the statistical analysis without the outliers causing statistical anomalies. So for example, this 200 is a huge outlier. Everything else is under 20. And so that is going to cause the mean to go up, and it's going to cause a lot of things to look low. So we hit the Normalize button. It takes that 200, turns it gray, it ignores it, and you'll see the number of treatment points went down to just six points. Pericardium, six. Large intestine, six. And stomach, 40. And these points then would be treated to address what we're seeing here, the pericardium issue, the large intestine issue, and the stomach issue. So that makes it nice and simple. If I take the normalize off, then you'll see that it actually is showing more points to be treated. So I always make it a rule that when I hit the normalize button, if the number of treatment points goes down, that's what I want to do because it's focusing on the most important, most effective points. You'll see also that there are some additional treatment options. You can click here. And these are other ways that you can approach this particular person. Now, whether you would want to go through and treat all of these sing points or give them an assignment to treat them themselves, for example, is really up to you. Similarly, it'll give you auricular points. These are points on the ear that can be treated. Back shoe points. Now this particular um, exam doesn't show any back shoe points needing treatment. And divergent channels as well. So in this case, you look for what gives you the best treatment protocol, the most applicable points. I like to go with the fewest number of points. And then that's what's treated. Now I want to talk about some of the other graph types. So for this, I'm going to go back to this example patient. We're going to look at this example graph we started with. This is the baseline graph. The six meridians on the left, these are the hand meridians, and the six on the right, these are on the feet, me, me, uh, totaling up to be the, the 12 meridians of Chinese medicine, the 12 standard meridians. 
This graph puts them yin and yang, and it shows that yin is averaging 113, yang is averaging 100, and it shows that the patient is yin dominant. You can put them in their element pairs. You can put them in their five elements model to show which of the elements is most dominant or least dominant. In this case, you can see metal is most dominant with 130, and wood is least dominant at 83. We can look at the energy cycle throughout the day, going from 3 a.m. Each meridian gets a two-hour block, so 3 to 5 for lung, 5 to 7 for large intestine, and so on. Or you can put that on what's called the horary chart to show throughout the day what the energy is doing. And in this case, you can see, for example, 3 to 5 a.m., lung is quite high. The ratios graph gives you the ratio of the upper versus lower meridians. That's the hand meridians versus the foot meridians. And in this case, the hand ones are 11% more dominant than the foot, so it's 11% upper. Left-right will tell you uh, the dominance between the left side and the right side. And this little plus sign will move around on the crosshairs to show where the energy is most dominant. Here's your yin versus yang again, showing the patient is yin dominant. Overall energy level and overall stability score. And then it boils it all down into a, into a single score called a PIE, Personal Integrated Energetic Score. In this case, it's a 74. Now, when we look at virtual examples, what we see is yin versus yang is going to show that there's definitely some yang dominance here for this patient. We put it by element we can see again that the, the readings are quite a bit different than what you would get when you're doing actual EDS readings on skin, but they highlight the difference. Clearly here, when we look at the various elements, earth element is the one that's strongest, and it's because of that huge split that's going on in stomach, and so we would balance that and we would see that resolved. Energy cycle gives you time of day when these things are applicable. You don't have to treat it at this time of day, but it does tell you the time of day when these things might be causing problems for the person. We look at the ratios graph and you can see that left dominant and lower dominant, the plus sign has gone all the way over here, yang dominant. Now you'll see that these numbers are all greatly amplified. Qi energy level 2% really if you were to measure it using direct EDS obviously it would give you a different reading. So this is not a reading you need to worry about what you worry about is what is out of balance. And so yin yang is out of balance, left, right, and upper, lower. Those are all out of balance. And by treating the points that are recommended, we would expect to see that balance get better. Then the PIE score came in at 47 for this particular patient. And again, we would want to see that score improve with uh, continued sessions. So that gives us a little bit of the basics in, uh, about how to use the virtual EDS TCM module. Um, there's also an information screen that gives you printed information about the imbalances that were located, what they, what they do and what they mean. And then based on this, once you've treated the patient, you can of course run this exam again or run it in the future and uh, compare to see how the patient has been doing. So that's just a little bit about how to use it. Uh, if you have any further questions, then please um, go ahead and, and contact us and let us know how we can help.